I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, 
Thou shalt not be a false witness. Thou shalt not be a false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading the gospel as we normally do. So they don't have to take the gospel to the doctor. They're reading it in class. So don't A reading from the letter of Paul to the, to the Romans. For the okay. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have attained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our suffering of hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood. Will we be saved through him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Please be seated. As you notice, we are reading the gospel a little differently this morning. I have help. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus had to go through Samaria so he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. 
It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water. Give me a drink. How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a Samaritan woman? If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his son and his flocks drank from it? Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Sir, give me this water so that I may, I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to drink water. Go and cut your husband back and come back. I have no husband. You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. I know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want? or Why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything that I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? The people then left the city and were on their way to find Jesus. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sour and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that which you did labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor.
please rise to the conclusion of the gospel. Many Samaritans from the city believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it's no longer because of what you said that we believe, but we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated, friends. Thank you. Thank you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Like the woman at the well, Lord, we come this day seeking the water of life for the quenching of our thirsty souls. Fill us with your Spirit, and then send us to call others into your presence they too may encounter you, the true and living God. All this we ask in your most precious name. Amen. First of all, let me say to you that for the next three Sundays, the format we just used for the gospel we will use here because of the length of these gospel readings leading us right up to the passion narrative. So I want to thank those who assisted me so beautifully in the reading of the gospel. Eileen and Bo and my brother Marvin. I want to share with you some reflections on that long gospel, well-known gospel, by the way, the story of the woman of Samaria. And I want to focus on her words to her fellow villagers. Come and see a man who told me everything that I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? The 29th verse of the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to John. Come, see a man. A truly amazing encounter between Jesus and an unknown Samaritan woman at this historic place known as Jacob's Well. For centuries, this well served as a respite for travelers in this parched and barren region of the Holy Land. Jews 
and Gentiles alike were familiar with this ancient site, as it was the only source of clean drinking water for miles around. The depth of the well ensured that no matter how severe the drought, the well would never run dry. Jesus and his disciples were quite familiar with this site and must have visited many times before. On this occasion, Jesus decided to take a rest at the well while his disciples went into the neighboring community to purchase food. It was during their absence that this life-changing event took place. And the way John relates this story, you would have to believe that Jesus deliberately stayed at the well just so he could meet this woman to engage her and enlighten her and the ways of God. For as soon as the disciples departed, the woman came to draw water. And Jesus seized the moment to strike up a conversation, a conversation that would lead eventually to a whole community finding true salvation. And Jesus began with a very simple request of the woman. Give me a drink. Give me a drink. There was a good reason for the woman to be skeptical at first. No wonder she blurted out, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? In his haste to get to the deep significance of this encounter, the gospel writer didn't tell us how Jesus answered this earnest plea of the Samaritan woman. Neither did he tell us what the disciples were thinking when they came back to find Jesus in conversation with this Gentile woman. All John tells us is this, they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want or why are you speaking to her? In this simple yet profound act, Jesus challenged the assumptions and prejudice of both Jews and Samaritans. You know, my friends, Jews in those days referred to the Samaritans as infidel dogs. Yes, infidel dogs. And clean and not fit to be in their company. And I'd like to think that the Samaritans had equal hatred for them as well. At the time of Jesus, women were treated as inferior to their male counterpart and should not be engaged in theological conversation. That is why Martha was so ashamed when her sister Mary was sitting in the company of the men listening to Jesus explain Torah. Martha came to Jesus and said, don't you care? Get my sister out of there. She is an embarrassment. Of course, we know that story and Jesus would have none of that. And so here we see Jesus at this historic well, Jacob's well, about to break down some barriers 
In an instant, Jesus would break down these two stereotypes. By not only engaging the Samaritan woman in a meaningful discourse, but also accepting the invitation of the Samaritan villagers to spend not one day, not a moment, but two days with them, eating, drinking, and teaching them about the true nature of God. This was scandalous to those Jews who knew that you should not be associating with such infidels as these Samaritans. What a practical lesson on ministry this must have been for the disciples. Now they can truly embrace the great commission of Jesus to take the good news to all people without distinction of race, creed, gender. Jesus came for all people was the profound message in this encounter. I find this entire episode most intriguing. The lyrics of one of my all-time favorite gospel songs are based on this narrative. Don't worry, I won't sing today. Marvin did my singing for me already. But you know the lyrics of this song. Like the woman at the well I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill it up and make it whole. That song was inspired by this experience of this Samaritan woman. One day I'll ask Marvin to sing that. That's a beautiful song. Fill my cup, Lord. You know, friends, it was Augustine of old that was credited with this saying that holds true for all times. The souls of mortals are restless until they find peace with God. Here was a restless woman longing to be filled with the Spirit of God. She was seeking and searching. Thanks be to God on that day she encountered Jesus of Nazareth. The Samaritan woman fits this description very beautifully. And you must remember, this was way, way before Henry VIII or Elizabeth Taylor. Five times she was married, unheard of for a Jewish woman in those days. And now she's shacking up with a man who wasn't her own. Folks in the community must have hurled insults in her direction. Normally the women would go together early morning or in the cool of the afternoon to draw water. But she came alone alone at noonday. Perhaps the other women didn't, didn't want to be associated with her. They didn't think much of her. They didn't want her to be seen in their company. She must have had a miserable existence among her kinfolks. 
That is, if you accept this narrative at face value, I know that the overwhelming majority of scholars and preachers have advocated this more salacious interpretation of the Samaritan woman. She was a flirt. However, this morning I want to introduce another interpretation of this text. Not a popular interpretation, but one that I think holds some value. And to tell you about this, I want you, when you get home, to turn to the 17th chapter of the second book of Kings, reading from verse 29. Because there we find this interesting description of the religious practices of the Samaritans. This was how they worshiped God. You will remember that the Samaritans were those Jews who moved away from the community and mixed with other ethnic groups and borrowed some of their customs and cultures. There in the second book of Kings we read that they worship five deities. Five bells. They adopted these bells from their neighbors along with their worship. They were worshiping Yahweh, and at the same time, they were mingling with these other five deities. We are further told that. They appointed from among themselves all sorts of people as priests of the high place who sacrificed for them in the shrines of the high places. So they worship the Lord, but they also serve their own gods after the manner of the nations from among whom they had been carried away. To this day, they continue to practice their former customs. Now, this is where it really gets interesting. The Hebrew word for Baal, for deity, is Baal. Guess what is the Hebrew word for husband? Yes, Baal. They're the same word. So is it possible then that what Jesus and this woman had was a truly religious conversation from the very beginning, had nothing to do with, with men, but with gods? And it makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? But it takes away the fun of looking at this rather loose woman, huh? Rather, she was a very deeply spiritual woman in search of meaning and life. So this is how that passage could be read. Jesus said to her, you have had five Baals, five husbands, five deities, and they're listed for you in that chapter I quoted from 2 Kings. And you're mingling with this Jewish religion and you don't know much about Judaism. So that's not your own. But now you're about to find a true faith. And that's what she meant when she went back to her community and said, Come, see a man who told me all the things I've ever done. Come and see a man who knew that I was dabbling in these religious experiences, looking for answers, couldn't find it, but here I found it in the Messiah. Whichever way you interpret this wonderful story, we can learn a great deal from the woman of Samaria. 
she was determined to find meaning to life. And she did not want to hold on to it for herself. She wanted to share it with others, with her kinfolks. That void, that emptiness, that drove her in search of Baals, of husbands, was now satisfied. When you read that story, and you must read it again, because like I said, John, this is John's way of writing. You will get many different ways of looking at the same text. When you read it, you would have thought that the, 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 the man would have accompanied her back to Jesus. But there was no mention of a man or those five husbands because they were in her psyche. That's who she worshipped. I know some Christians. I don't know if you know them. But they would come to church, worship, and when things go bad and they want answers, they go look other places. In the Caribbean, we, we call them the Obia man, you know. We go look for one of them because they may know how to get our business right. I think this woman was one of those who was looking for answers that she couldn't find in Judaism. But whatever it is, what a wonderful woman she is. A woman of faith and longing. A woman who is encouraging us today to leave church with a burning message to our friends. Come, come see a man. Come and meet Jesus. Come and, 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 and let me introduce you to my friend, my newfound friend. I want you to think about that for a little while because we are on a mission, you know that. Our mission is to tell our friends the same thing, come. Come see a man. And we will encounter the living God as we break bread in this church, as we share in the body and blood of Christ, as we receive the, the, the bread, we will hear those words, this is the body of Christ. The Lord is here, beloved. The Lord is in this place. So, let us thank you. Oh boy. That's a good sign, isn't it? Kids are running around the church. And there's a lot of good room for them to run right now. So bring them out. Let them play. Let them know this is their church. But let us bring the adults as well. I want you to leave church today and, and, and identify one person, just one person, and say next Sunday I want you to come and meet a man. Meet Jesus with us. Because we are the community of faith. And Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, where am I? I'm in the midst. So when I start the service and say, the Lord is here, I am dead serious, beloved. God's spirit is with us in this place. Next week, Sunday, we will have double the attendance because we will each bring one person with us. Could we try that? Let's try it. Come, see a man. Come meet Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you, sir. Please rise if you're able.
and affirm with me the words of our creed. We believe in one God, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Where the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Take your time, Lisa. We know she's busy getting the coffee hour together. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for knowing that. <laughs> okay. You may be seated for the prayer. Please, yes. Yeah. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray especially for Grace Glover, Shirley Boudou, the family of J.D. Starks, Donnell Simmons, and Corliss Gamble. And now let us say the prayer in search of our new rector. Father, we pray that you be with us during this time of transition, during this time of searching and new beginnings, on a path that you have chosen for us as a congregation. Please be with us every day as we look for our next leader within your divine order and guidance. Amen. Lord, listen to our prayers and hear the voice of our supplications as we who trust in your word eagerly await your help. For you are the God of our salvation. These things we ask through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly saying, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us show sign of peace and love in this place, beloved. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Good job.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Bless, Lord, these gifts. Bless the hands that gave them. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy Glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. Glory be to thee, Almighty God, O Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy this give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, 
We, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty. With these, thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks to the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of the almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are bold to sing. Thy kingdom come.
do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. They are um, there are two of them over there. Jason and Holly do the communion. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Did you get The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
good soul shall find rest. of like just the last verse just the last verse near the cross I'll watch and wait Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to do, walk in, through Jesus Christ, O Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. I'd like to invite our warden to come now and share with us some of the good news and happenings in our parish. Thank you, Brother Trotman. Thank you, sir. Good morning, St. Phillips. Good morning. Oh, it's so great to be here today. Good to see you all this morning. Um, on behalf of the wardens and Vestia St. Phillips, we want to thank you for coming out to worship with us this morning. And all you that tuned in this morning, YouTube and other sources, thanks for your dedication. Thank you very much for coming to serve with us this morning. I myself didn't know if I could be here this morning after missing last week. Um, not fully 100% yet, but I'm here, thank God. I'm good. Yes, sir. I just want to wish my, um, my Madam Warden a speedy recovery because she too was under the weather. We miss you. Um, first, is there, are there any um, visitors here with us this morning? Just stand up, we can give you a nice St. Phillips welcome. Any visitors? Oh yeah, there we go. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming down and worship with us this morning. We hope to see you back. We're here every Sunday at 9.30. Please come on out. Thanks a lot. Um, next week we will have in, um, we're celebrating Women's Day. And so we hope to see you coming tomorrow, next week. We have an, um, a guest speaker next week, next week um, celebrating Women's Day. And um, we're asking um, the women to wear some white uh, some shade of white. We don't mind seeing some men in some white suits, though. That would be nice. You know? <laughs> yeah, no problem. I can say it. I can do it. I can wear white suit. I don't got no problem with that. Um, we ask in the, um, all who haven't picked up the offering envelopes as yet um, to get them, please. Um, they're in Martin Hall. And if you know of someone that you can... Um, deliver it to. You can also get theirs, take it for them. We just try not to mail them. If you can do that, we'll appreciate it very much. 
Um, after church next week, they will have an ECW meeting. Um, the location or the venue is not yet determined, but if there's any more information you need on that, we can see Miss Sherry Hobson. She can shed some more light on that. Um, one other thing, um, we were having a diocesan confirmation on the 29th of April. And we're asking anyone who would like to become a member of St. Philip's um, to just call the office or see Father Anthony. Yes. You get some more information and set some light on that and how you can proceed. Now, at the end of service today, we're asking you if you can just join us in Martin Hall for Warwick Fellowship. Um, one of our own vestry members hosting coffee hour this morning, Norma Lewis's birthday. Mm -hmm. So she'll be host hosting coffee hour this morning. There, please check your, um, what's happening at St. Pete for any other information, what's going on right now at St. Philip's. Now, if there's anyone who's celebrating a birthday, anniversary, in need of healing prayers or traveling mercies, please come forward so Father Anthony can give you a blessing. Birthdays, anniversaries, healing prayers, or traveling mercy. All right, quite a few folks are yeah. having events. Birthday, Birthday, I know. Traveling. Oh. Birthday. Nice. Birthday. Nice. Birthday? All right. Over here. And um, healing. Yes. What's her name? Angela. Okay. Oh, boy. And you are here for healing. Okay. So let me pray for God's healing first. Almighty God. You are the great physician. You bless our doctors and healthcare professionals, and you give them skills to effect healing. And so we pray that you will bless these, your servants, for whom we are offering our prayers today, that you will grant them wholeness of body, mind, and spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And for those who are traveling, going to Belize? <laughs> no? Scotland. Scotland, Belize. Wow. Are you taking him to Belize? Yes, I'm hey, 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 man. Yes, sir. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for your servants as they travel, that coming and going they will be sustained by your presence, O God. Help them to leave a blessing behind and bring them back safely, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 And now for those who are celebrating birthdays. Almighty God, all years are in your hand. And so we ask that you bless these, your servants, mother, son, we pray for the, your servants who are celebrating birthdays, Lord. And we ask that you grant them many more happy years in your service. Bless them with good health, peace, love, and joy. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Are we going to sing for you now? <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, grant you many more. Yes, go ahead. Good morning. I'm Sherry Good Hobson. Good morning. And um, whew, 
I'm a little chilly. And the president of ECW. And next Sunday, I think what we'll do is steal away because after um, the service, there'll be a little reception and we can meet in here. I will be participating in Quiet Day, which is on the 18th. And I'm sure that I will have. Did I do that? No. I'm sure. I'm sure that I'll have Episcopal church women, church women news to share with everybody. So um, hopefully whatever is going on with our heat will be fixed then. And um, we can just meet here. Um, we can, you know, just excuse ourselves from the refreshments or after we have some refreshments, we can just come in here and meet. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just to make a quick announcement, friends, we are almost midway in the Lenten journey. And so we are inviting you to please join us for noonday prayer on Wednesdays. Um, the information is in the bulletin, how you can come and pray with us. Also on Fridays, we make the Stations of the Cross using Zoom. We don't come to church as we used to do back in the days and walk the 14 stations. We do it on Zoom. It takes about half an hour, really. And then we have a little reflection. And so this Lent, we have decided to talk a little more about the Beatitudes. We read the Beatitudes a few Sundays ago, and um, I believe we, it's worth uh, pondering a little more than what you can do in a sermon. So um, we are this coming um, Friday night, we will be looking at some more of those Beatitudes. How many there were again? Eight. And so far we have done three. <laughs> um, when you come on Friday, we'll do another one. And we hopefully we'll finish all the Beatitudes by the time we come to Holy Week. So do please come and join us. Uh, as I told you, the Gospel readings for the coming Sundays are very, very long readings. And the diocese sent us this wonderful suggestion that we could break it up in parts. And that's what we are experimenting with. Um, this is my 45th year of ordination as a priest, and it's the first time that we have attempted to read the gospel the way we did this morning. Normally, the priest would come in the middle and proclaim the gospel, and we all stand during that whole time, weary legs and all. But this time, you get to sit a little and listen to the readers. Why am I saying that? Because if you would like to be a reader, call us and you will participate in the reading of the gospel. I think it's fun. If you'd like to read, just call the office, let uh, Carl put you down and give you your assigned reading. Again, I'm so grateful to those who uh, didn't say no. The young man was very, very nervous. I said, I need you to read, and he looked around, why me? But the Lord wanted him to read. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, man. God bless you. And Eileen, thank you. And, and my brother, you could sing every day to the glory of God for me. I just enjoy Marvin singing. And we have more singing next week, I believe, in the, in the, in the gospel reading. That's new. That, that wasn't a part of it. But thank God. So, um... You heard about this wonderful mission trip that we are going on. And I know that some of you are already supporting by coming along, but some of you are not able to come, but you would like to make your donation. This is what I'm suggesting so that your donation be credited. Um, if you'd like to give a donation to the mission of Belize, and you know why we're going to dedicate this new church building 
that we started from scratch five years ago. We went there and we broke ground. And five years later, we are returning to dedicate and consecrate the new building. It's a, a gem for the community. They didn't have a hurricane shelter. Now that church will be able to be used as a hurricane shelter. It, is, it can seat the entire community of 200 people or so. And uh, it was a bold venture. Um, but you know, there's still some <laughs> finishing touches that we need to put on before we get there in April. For example, we will be coming from afar. We'll need to have restrooms. Those are not quite ready. So if you'd like to make a donation, I was told that it would cost another $4,000 to complete the work. So whatever you can give, I can't tell you how much to give. You could give a penny and it will be all right. Make it out to the, but you know what? A check would cost more than a penny. So don't write a penny in a check, but whatever else you write in a check, write it to St. Philip's Church. And then at some point, I will get the total from the church and take it with us and present it to them on your behalf. And those, or I'll ask somebody who will be on the trip to say, this is from your brothers and sisters at St. Philip's Church. I think that would be very, very meaningful. Yes, in your, on your check, you must put Belize Mission so the vestry will know how to allocate your funds. Thank you, my friends. Please rise if you are able for the benediction. <laughs> May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
thank you. Well, thank you. Good morning. Did you take your stuff on the freezer Wednesday? Yes, yes. I took it to them, yes. Yes. <laughs> hello, hello, how are you? God bless. Hey man, how you doing? Sorry I can't take you to Belize with me, man. Yeah, that's where they took a lot of our people from Africa, you know. <laughs> Oh, God bless you. Oh, sciatica, yes, it's sciatica. 